everyone, welcome to Mountain View Kids for this Sunday. I'm Alex, and we thought that you guys might be missing seeing the church building since you are only watching church online. So we're gonna go around Mountain View Church at the main campus here and show you some fun stuff around here. For instance, did you know that from right here, you can see all three stairways at Mountain View. There's one over there, there's one over here, and there's one over there. This is the only spot at church where you can see all three. Did you know we have a washer and dryer in the kitchen? Did you know that we have a secret cabinet underneath the stairs right here? And we keep very special stuff in it. Vacuum cleaners! So that way if you ever want to sneak in here and help clean up, you know where to come. Do you know I can move this wall with just one finger? Okay, maybe not. Did you know that we have a conference room? Did you know that there's a really creepy baby on top of the TV in the youth room? Did you know that we screen our own t-shirts and print the labels on them? Did you know we have 38 flags around in our sanctuary for all the different countries that we have missionaries that we support? Did you know that one time we got cats stuck in the ducts here? You could hear them meowing during the service. We had to cut a hole in the wall to get them out. Did you know that we have a whole wall of missionary cards that have people's pictures and the names of the country that they're serving in so that you can remember them and pray for them? We also have some missionaries that it's not safe to show their photos because they live in countries where it's illegal to be a Christian, where people are trying to put Christians in jail or even kill them. And today's Bible story is about one of those guys who really didn't like Christians. His name was Saul. Let's see a video about him. Saul was an expert on Jewish law. He did not believe that Jesus was the Son of God and was very angry with anyone who believed in Jesus. Saul threatened to kill people who were disciples of the Lord and he would travel to other cities and arrest believers and bring them back to Jerusalem. Well, Saul learned about some believers living in Damascus. He decided he was gonna go there and arrest them and put them in prison. But as he was walking on the Damascus road, a bright light from heaven suddenly flashed all around him. The light was so bright that it blinded Saul and he fell to the ground. At that point, he heard a voice asking, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Or why are you hurting me? Saul answered, Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus, the one you've been persecuting, the voice said. Go into the city and you will be told what to do. Everyone traveling with Saul was super confused. They heard the voice, but they didn't see anyone. When Saul stood up, he was blind. So the men traveling with Saul had to lead him to Damascus. Saul did not eat or drink for three days. In Damascus, God sent a vision to a believer named Ananias. Go to the street called Straight, to the house of Judas, and ask for Saul. He saw a vision and knows you are coming to help him see again. Ananias, knowing who Saul was, was a little reluctant. He said, Lord, this man has hurt your people in Jerusalem. He's here to arrest your followers. But God told Ananias that Saul would tell Gentiles, kings, and Israelites about God. Ananias obeyed and went to find Saul. Ananias placed his hands on Saul and immediately something like scales fell off of Saul's eyes and Saul could see again. Saul got up and went and was baptized. After Saul believed in Jesus and received the Holy Spirit, he changed. His whole life changed. He began to teach people about Jesus. A lot of people who heard Saul were puzzled because they were like, isn't this the guy who used to arrest and threaten people who believed in Jesus? And the Jews, they made a plan to kill Saul. They kept watching the city gate, but Saul, having learned of the plan, hid in a large basket. And when it was night, his friends lowered him through a hole in the city wall. And now, a special report from Hunt Burkleton. Mooseberry Academy, school for the very, very, very gifted students, and home of revenge. I'm investigative reporter Hunt Burkleton, and this is Hunt Burkleton Knows What's Really Going On. 
days ago, Jasper, a young Mooseberry student, took it upon himself to share the truth of Jesus with another student, one Stephanie Malefany, a self-proclaimed evil genius. Mooseberry is a school for geniuses. There's no rule that says you have to be a kind genius. After a long, quick glance at the rule book, I found a rule against using an aardvark as a napkin. One that says Mooseberry students can only wear one pair of shoes at a time. And even a rule that discourages hacking into restaurants to figure out what's in secret sauces. But Stephanie was right. There was no rule that states she can't be an evil genius. That missing rule explains what happened next. I told Stephanie about Jesus, and she somehow put honey in my lab coat and then released a bunch of ants. I thought I had her fooled though. After I told her about Jesus, I hid out and left my lifelike robot Jasper Bud to take whatever she dished out. Looks like she got us both. Stephanie makes Jasper Bot have make hair formula, not on purpose. Now I am by razors. I've asked the question, why? Why would someone go through this? Telling people about Jesus is important. Even if it means ants or facial hair, even if it means fire-breathing bears or mosquitoes or mosquito-breathing bears. Taking risks is something I understand. It's like when I sand skied the Mojave Desert wearing live alligators on my feet. Kablamo! Kablamo, indeed. Risk is a part of sharing Jesus with others because it's important. But again, I ask, why? Why is it important to share Jesus with others like Stephanie? I'm guessing it's for the cash reward. Um, there's no cash reward or whatever. You remind me of why I don't talk to non-geniuses. There's no cash reward, but there is a heavenly reward for people who live their lives for Jesus and share him with others. I think it's awesome that there's reward waiting for me in heaven, but that's not why I talk to Stephanie about Jesus. When people finally trust in Jesus, they change. They become a new person. Instead of thinking of themselves as bad or villains or whatever, they can think of themselves as new or clean because Jesus has the power to change us. We have to believe that he can. So yeah, I talked to Stephanie about Jesus, and yeah, I have a bunch of ant bites because of it, but it won't stop me. I'll keep telling her about Jesus because he wants something new and special for her life. An inspiring answer to a really great question that was asked by me. But my great questions aren't over. There are plenty more where that came from. Until next time, I'm Hunt Burkleton, and I know what's really going on! Isn't it crazy how Saul was the last person you would ever think to become a Christian? He hated Christians. He hated Jesus. But God loved Jesus. Saul. He loved him and he knew that Saul could do amazing things and Saul could tell people all around the world about who Jesus was. And so that's why God showed up. That's why God met Saul on the road to Damascus so that he could change his life. Do you know some people that maybe it's kind of hard to think that they would ever believe in Jesus? Maybe it's someone in your family. Maybe it's someone that you know from school. Maybe it's a friend or maybe it's one of your parents' friends. Well, this is my challenge for you guys this week. Just like we learned that no one is too far gone to become a believer. That God loves everyone and he wants everyone to know and believe in him. But we have to have faith that God can do this in their lives. And so today I want you to get with your families and I want you to come up with your top three. Now, what do I mean by top three? Think about who are three people in your lives that you can start praying that they will meet Jesus. I want you to think about who that is and I want you to come up with your top three list and then get together as a family and pray for these people. Not just today, try and pray for them for the rest of the year. 
Maybe that's one of your commitments to, to do as a family that every single week or every single day, you're going to pray for your top three. What a great way that we can join with God because God loves those people so much that he sent his son Jesus and he wants them to know all about who he is and he wants them to believe too. So I hope you guys were blessed by our story today. It's so awesome when we get to know that there are people who accept and believe in Jesus all over the world. So have a great day. We'll see you guys next week.